I love really dramatic photo edits, but I understand that for some people it can be intimidating trying to push things this far. So today I'm going to show you how to get this look in Pixelmator Pro and then save it as a preset. Now, as with all videos in this series, if you'd like to just download the preset, that's linked down below, or you can follow along and I'll show you how to get this edit for yourself. Let's jump into it. Now, first things first, if you'd like to follow along with this edit, you'll want to head over to SignatureEdits.com. They're great about giving these free raw files for you to practice your edits on. They have a lot of content that's continuously growing all the time. So thank you for them for providing these files. Now, you'll notice this photo already looks pretty good, but if you're working on your own photos, they might not look great right out of the camera. So if that's the case for you, I like to click ML Enhance just to get started, and then come up here and click Convert to Color Adjustment Layer. And the reason why I do that is because we want the adjustments that get it looking like a good base photo separate from the edits that make it this big, moody, dramatic shot. When you separate them that way, it means that the dramatic edit can be reused on multiple photos so long as you have that photo set to a good base level. Now with that base edit set, you can click back on your raw layer and get started. Now you've probably noticed the first thing I like to do with all of my edits is to start with the curves adjustment. And that's because if I can introduce some contrast early on, it makes it easier to see the direction of this photo and play with the color sort of separate. So for this edit, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a technique that is called crushing the blacks. And what that does is it means you take your black level and you crank it up and it makes it so more of those darker tones are turned completely to black. And you can actually see this happening up here in the histogram layer. As I slide this, all of the colors slide to the left until they eventually turn to black. Now you don't want to go too far because you lose information as something turns to pure black, but you can add a lot of drama just by bringing this over maybe like 10 or 12 points. Now it, it might not seem dramatic to you, but when you turn it on and off, it's pretty visible. Now after that, I do want to make sort of an S-curve, so I'm going to bring up my highlights until they start looking really good. And then I'm going to bring down some of these shadows. And what I'm looking for is I'm trying to make it so that these skin tones still look very legible and that we don't lose too much detail up in these super brights. So you can see if I push it too far, we lose all of that detail. And so as long as I keep this curve, and I'm watching the histogram up in that corner, as long as I keep it from going too far, I can get a pretty dramatic curve that adds a lot of contrast between the darks and the lights. All right, I'm pretty happy with that, and this is the before and after. You can see adding just that amount of contrast goes a long way to helping your photos stand out. Now the only other tool we need to get this look is to come up here to the Selective Color tool. Now the strategy here is we're going to make the oranges and the reds and the yellows really stand out and take out everything else in the photo. So I'm gonna start here with my blues. And I'm not even gonna be fancy about it, I'm just gonna take the blues right out of the equation. Now you might be worried about doing something like this, but as you can see in this photo, there's not a lot that happened to the blues other than it cleaned up some of these buildings and made them a much purer white. Now with teal, I'm gonna do the same thing. And with green, I'm going to go almost as far. You can see as I move closer from the blues to these colors I actually want to keep, I want to ramp out of this desaturation. So I'm going to keep a little bit of the green here, not a ton, but to help with the contrast against the yellows, I'm going to make these greens really dark. And I think this is where a lot of beginners get hung up is they get worried that completely sliding these sliders to one side is going to ruin their photo. But as you can see, all it does is it cleans up some of the muddiness in these whites and grays and gets us more contrast in the colors that we're trying to accentuate, which are the skin tones, the reds, the oranges, and the yellows. Now let's do the same thing going in the opposite direction. With purple, I'm going to ramp out a little bit quicker. Now in this photo, there's not actually that much purple, so you can't see a ton of difference. And in the pinks, I'm going to tone it right down to about here, but I'm going to do something a little bit different, which is pull them very slightly towards red. Now again, this is hard to see in this particular photo because you can see from the histogram that there's not a ton of pinks, but we're getting things like these shirts and even some things in the ears that are going to be pulled back to the central color, which is these reds, oranges, and yellows. Which, speaking of our central color, let's go over to red now. This is going to be the anchor point of our whole photo, and so I'm not going to change red at all. In fact, all that I'm going to do on these tones is I'm going to pull 
the orange a little bit more towards red and you can see if you go too far you start getting pink. So just enough that it makes that gold really dramatic. And then I'm also going to do the same thing with yellow. I'm going to pull it closer to orange. And you can see the difference that that's making with these golden tones. And again, it's less visible, but it's doing the same thing to skin tones. Now, the last thing I'm going to do to make the yellows a little bit separated from everything else is I'm going to desaturate them slightly. You can see if I go too far, I lose a lot of the color. Still a cool look, but maybe a little too much. And then I'm also going to dial up the brightness. I found that if you keep your oranges and reds dark and your yellows bright, you can push them to be very similar colors, but it helps them really stand out and create this color contrast. And I think this is working pretty good. The one thing that I might change is dialing up the brightness of the pinks. There's not really that much separation between pink and red in this edit. And so if I do just a little bit there, you can see that there is actually now a difference between the pinks and the reds. So now if we look at the before and the after, you can see it has a lot more contrast and the main colors that we care about are way more vivid, which keeps our attention here on the subject that we actually care about. Now you can continue tuning from here if you'd like. For example, if you'd like to bring back more of the greens, for example, you can do something like that. But once you're finished, you just wanna come up here to this try dot menu and export the adjustments as a LUT. Now a LUT is a universal format that you can use to bring into all sorts of other programs like Final Cut Pro and apply this color grade to whatever photo or video you're working on, which if you like mine is available down in the link below. If you found this one useful, make sure you like and subscribe. And of course, if you wanna continue getting access to these resources as I post them, make sure to support me on Patreon. Okay, we'll catch you on the next one.